everyone. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the difference between public and private goods. So public goods are what we call non-rivalrous and non-excludable, whilst private goods, on the other hand, are both rivalrous and excludable. So non-rivalrous just means that my consumption or use of a good doesn't preclude or prevent others from enjoying that same good at the same time. So for instance, if I'm getting benefit from some street lights because they're lighting my path as I'm walking home, this use certainly doesn't mean that others can't also find benefit from those same street lights. So street lights are non-rivalrous. Non-excludable just means that it's really hard to exclude other people from gaining benefit or use from a good. And this could be, for instance, because of the nature of the good. For instance, it's physically really, really hard for me to stop a ship that's sailing from seeing the light from a lighthouse or to stop pedestrians and motor vehicles from using a public road. Alternatively, it could be the case, though, that there are laws in place that protect access to the good. For example, it would be illegal to stop or prevent someone from entering a public park and enjoying that space. And that's a swing set and a slide if you're wondering. I'm drawing lots of pictures for this video and actually makes me pretty happy. And what this means is that public goods, in being both non-rivalrous and non-excludable, well, this guarantees that many people can find benefit from just one unit of these goods. So all of the goods that I've discussed so far, so lighthouses, roads, parks, and streetlights, they're all plausibly both non-excludable and non-rivalrous. So very plausibly public goods. And well, this means that one park, one lighthouse, one road, these individual goods can bring benefit to many people. And that's a distinguishing feature of public goods because they're both non-rivalrous and non-excludable. Now, private goods are basically the opposite. If a good is rivalrous, this means that when someone uses that good, it prohibits others from gaining use or benefit from that good. For example, if I have a cup of coffee or if I buy a meal, once I'm consuming these things, other people really can't consume them as well. They can't get benefit from those goods. As another example, the desk that I'm using here, I'm using it, I've got my computer and my microphone on it and my notes. It's a pretty rivalrous good. My use of it is making it pretty hard that, that others can also gain use from it at the same time. Now, if a good is excludable, it means that it's quite easy to exclude people from using that good or to gain benefit from that good. So for instance, my pen is excludable for at least two reasons. To start, there are laws that prohibit or prevent people from stealing my pen to make it illegal. But also it's quite small. I can take my pen, I can hold onto it, I can put it in my pocket and walk away with it. It's quite easy for me to exclude others from using my pen. So private goods are both rivalrous and excludable. And this means that one unit of a private good and really of the goods that I've mentioned here, so pens, my desk, a coffee, meals, they're pretty plausibly both rivalrous and excludable. So probably very plausibly are private goods. Well, those goods are really only associated with benefit or use from one person. And this is really in contrast to public goods, as we said before, where one unit of the good is associated with benefits to a lot of different people. And the differentiation that economists make between public and private goods, it's really because as economists, we're interested in the allocation of our scarce resources. And part of this question of allocation involves comparing the benefits associated with the consumption of a good with the cost of production. Now, in our theory, when we have private goods, well, we really only have to worry about the benefit afforded to the one person, so the single consumer who's enjoying that good. But for public goods, we need to add up the benefit afforded from all of the different people who will enjoy that, that good that's both non-excludable and non-rivalrous. So that's the difference between public and private goods, and that's kind of why it, it matters. So that's public and private goods. I hope the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. I drew pictures this time. Kept it fun for me. I keep happy, everyone. Hope you're doing well.